Hi, since we've done quite a lot of work in Photoshop, I thought we should have a look at using the 3D capabilities of Photoshop for photo montage. So this is a pretty pretty basic uh, thing that I've created here. It's a SketchUp model brought into Photoshop. Okay, it's very low res. This um, basically because of the speed the rendering, uh, the speed of the rendering is is pretty slow. So here's the here's the the SketchUp model. Let me just turn it around so you can see what it is. So it's a kind of quirky little thing, you know, just like a, a crazy canopy. It might be for like an exhibition or something. Uh, it could be like just a shelter or whatever. But uh, so you create a wee model in Photoshop, put materials on it at this stage, get it all coloured up the way you want. Because adding the materials in Photoshop is is quite awkward. So I would stick some basic materials on it here. Okay, and then you need to export that. So you export the 3D model. I've had a little experiment with this and I've found that the export into the 3DS file seems to be work pretty well. So a 3DS file, this is a 3D Studio native file, but it's quite a common file type for changing 3D stuff between software. So we'll export that. It's already there, so it's going to save over the top, so that's fine. So it creates the model, but it also sends away the uh, the textures. So there's a couple of textures there and also some colors. Okay, so there's materials and textures. Okay, so we'll finish with the uh, with SketchUp. So we'll take this take this from the start. Okay, so I'll just close this. Not bother saving the changes, and uh, we'll begin again with the the background photograph that we'd used before. Okay, now you need to know the the camera settings for the photograph. So to do that, you look at the look at the original file. Okay, so background photo original. If you right click it, properties, and then have a look at the details of the file okay and I'll tell you what lens was used what the lens setting was for the camera at the time it was taken so that's the focal length now I know a wee bit about my cameras and while this was a 10 millimeter lens it's a, it, the the camera that was used was a, it was a what's what's called a cropped sensor Okay, so if this had been on a full frame camera, I would use the 10 millimeters. But because this camera is a cropped sensor digital camera, you multiply this for Canon cameras anyway, you multiply this by 1.6. So the focal length should be, for any, any software use, should be 16. Okay, a wee bit tricky, you need to kind of have a look at that. Um, if, it just, if the photographs just come from uh, your uh, t phone or, or whatever, and then you should be able to safely go by that number okay but if you're using a cropped sensor camera be careful you might need to multiply this by about 1.5 1.6 to get it back to the proper perspective okay so back here we want to uh, import the model so we want to work in the, in the 3d workspace so if you go to window workspace and set your workspace to 3D. Okay, and then we want to pull in the model. So in 3D we want a new 3D layer from a file. Okay, you go and find your model 3DS file. Okay, so these are the two materials that got sent out of SketchUp. They're going to come in as well. They got brought in into this scene. Okay, just click OK. We're not we're not going to try and change any units here. Just go with what it offers. Okay, so the models come in, and what we can do is use these tools to navigate the scene. So we'll push the push the shelter back a bit. So you. You need to actually click and hold down here, okay? Okay, because I want to zoom backwards, so you click and hold. So we're dragging it back, and what I've, I've got to do this by eye. I don't really have any kind of guides 
that I can work with here. <coughs> Maybe you'd uh, done a sketch up overlay like we did before, a uh, sketch overlay and brought that in, you could use that as a, as a little helper to, to position it. Okay, and we'll turn it around, so use the orbit instead now. Actually, you've got you've got kind of a bit of a kind of clash between commands and then two places. So I'm going to use these ones. These ones seems to be a bit easier to to get to. Okay. So what I'm doing is trying to get that grid to match up with my photograph. And while it looks good here, it's not working over here. And that's because of the camera. Okay. What we need to do is set the perspective for the camera that we're using. So in the 3D area okay if I click on the camera okay and set the field of view to 16 so remember it was 10 millimeters but times 1.6 gives us 16 okay so there's more perspective here okay so let's see if we can drag this around it's a bit slow now it's struggling a bit okay I need to go further away Okay, I need to orbit this, and you've just got to eyeball this, really. So when you sit, start to see, see it's all sort of matching up now. The perspective is a considerably better match once you get this number set up properly. Okay, so I want to go back a bit now. So I'll push this back into the scene. Okay. Okay, let's bring it down a bit. Okay, that's not looking too too bad. You know? Heights wise, it wants to be kind of above people's head heights. Okay, so it's really, you know, just kind of an idea, but we're not quite right with the perspective there. So we need to turn it around a bit more. Okay, tilt it down a bit. Okay, we've got lots of lines that we can that can help us line things up here. That's looking good. I like that the way that line is fitting there. Okay. Watch for your shadows. Sometimes they look they, they can look a bit dislocated from the objects. See there's a leg there that doesn't look as if it's kind of touching the object. Okay, so we might need to move the actual items. Okay. So we can we can move the the model itself. If you click on over here click on the model we've got control of the actual objects and then you've got these little devices that help you move things up and down so you can see the way the shadow if we kind of try and get it as if the legs are and the shadows are touching properly it's not that easy it doesn't it's jumping in well, that's probably as good as I'm gonna get Okay, that's a very strong shadow, as if the sun was over here shining straight down on the building. Okay, it's, this kind of day isn't like that. You can see the benches and things. There's only a shadow directly under the bench. So really this, the, the, the sunlight, or whatever skylight there is, is coming straight down. <coughs> so in your, in your 3D layers area, you can find the, the light si system that's getting used. It's called an infinite light. And we can drag this around and you can see the shadow is changing. Okay, I've got a little device here showing me where the sun is, so I'm trying to get it kind of directly overhead if possible. It's a bit difficult to tell wh where it is facing, okay, kind of coming towards me. You can see the way the shadows change in. I'm just trying to get it as if it was straight up. Okay, and then you've got the intensity and and other settings for the sun. So up here, if I go to the sun symbol, it lets me change the intensity and the softness. So the shadows, I want them much softer, so much weaker. And this is the kind of thing that makes rendering take longer when you've got soft shadows. You see it's gone all kind of hazy now. Okay, the light color is a bit a bit strong. Let's let's add a little bit of warmth to it. Add a wee bit of warmth. Okay, and I can 
greater intensity for the light. Okay, I think I'll, I'll go with that. Um, you've got to be really careful what you click and, and stuff here because it can really easily reset the whole scene. It can be a little bit frustrating, so be be pretty uh, pretty careful where you click. Okay, I think I'm pretty safe there. Watch out especially for the cameras. You click on one of these and it will reset the view and you'll get seriously frustrated. Okay, now I'm not going to I'm not going to generate the render just yet because it it can very easily kind of mess things up, okay? So what I'm going to do is copy the whole of that 3D layer. So I'm just going to duplicate the whole thing before I render it. Okay? Because when we, once we've rendered, we basically flatten the whole scene. It's a bit bit crude. So I've, I've copied the shelter. I'm going to switch off the copy. Okay, and go back to the original shelter. Okay, I can now render the scene. Now this is this is extremely slow, uh, and this is a 5,000 by 3,000 image I've got here. I'd be uh, a bit optimistic, hoping this is going to render quickly. It's not the fastest of systems. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll crop the whole thing down to something a bit more manageable to so that we can see it happen. So if I go to a window, workspace, and just go back to essentials, Okay, and then I can crop this scene. Okay, I've put some numbers in here, 1200 by 600. So I'm just going to pull this in to focus on the, the shelter and get rid of all this stuff because it all just adds to the rendering time. The bigger that crop, the bigger that area is. Okay, let's put these to the side and let's just make sure we do that crop. Okay, I can zoom in, see what's happening. Let's just drop back one click. Now we'll go back to the uh, to the 3D workspace now. Okay, I'm going to hide that one. I'll click on my shelter layer, um, and what I can do now is render that layer or so I need to I need to render it first and then rasterize the layer. So I'm right clicking the layer and I need to render that 3D layer. Okay, and this is going to take time. You can see it generating, it's working stuff out, different aspects of the of the of the rendering. So this is going to take about six minutes. It's a bit pointless you sitting watching this render. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the video and once it's once it's finished rendering then I'll restart the video. But you can see down here there is a progress bar. You know, if you've got a big image, a big in initial base plate or whatever, then it's going to take ages before you see any blue appearing here. So watch out for this, it's not the fastest. Okay, it's just finishing off the shadows now, We're coming into 100%, so we're very nearly done. Okay, so this is a, it's a very strange way of finishing off images. I haven't found a good guide. To, to say you know how you export or whatever, uh, the only links I've seen I've sh I'll add them into the to the to the uh, description. But uh, you you have to basically right click the, the layer and then rasterize it, which basically destroys everything. It just squashes the whole lot. So rasterize that 3D layer, and that's why I copied it first. Okay, so I can rename that so that. So shelter render. We spacing that. Doesn't want it. Being strange. Okay. But it does mean I've got something that can float. So it's basically transparent there uh, with just the the items. So you know it just behaves like a normal layer now. Whatever you want to do. Okay. So I thought I'd show you, show you that because it, you know, it is a, a reasonably good intro to, to working with 3D. Kind of the general concepts are there. Um, 
There's all sorts of settings that you can change to to speed up rendering, but um, you know, without a, a very long-winded description of how it all works, it uh, it would it's uh, best just leave it on the the standard settings. Okay, hopefully that's been some use as well.